Star Wars Bounty Hunter began life when LucasArts was asked to make an Episode 2 based game which featured the character Jango Fett. In March 2001, game design documents were presented and development began shortly after. They wanted to develop a story that fleshed out Fett's character more fully than an Attack of the Clones, while at the same time remaining true to the spirit of the character as seen in the film. It was imperative to not dull the game with a slow story and loaded script. As such, their goal was to work a fine balance between backstory, narrative and action-packed gameplay. What's this? Nice try, Fett! Yeah. Dead or alive, Miko. Django Fett as a main character was developed to be an extension of the player's will. Fett is the vessel through which the player can live out the fantasy of being the galaxy's most dangerous bounty hunter. You want me? You gotta go through him first! Concept artists look to the team's favorite graphic novels for inspiration and the concept artwork by Ralph McQuarrie, Doc Chan, Joe Johnston and others who worked on the Star Wars films. They were given access to the episode 2 script and concept art early on before the film came out. LucasArts created storyboarded scripts of their cutscenes and gave them to ILM who developed them into cinematics. Industrial Light and Magic and Skywalker Sound assisted in the creation of the game, which was the first collaboration between LucasArts and both companies in the field of in-game cinematics. Let's see, this is the sound of, a very familiar sound of a lightsaber being turned on. The sound designers at LucasArts and the team at Skywalker Sound worked together to create the game's soundtrack. Skywalker Sound made sounds directly for game animation and events and created Foley sounds. In a video game, the user is doing things really quickly. They're, they're receiving feedback from the screen and also what they hear. And this is telling them how they're doing in the game. You know, have they destroyed the enemy? Mm. Are they moving on to the next level? You know, how are they running low on health? That sort of thing. So sound is really important for communicating all those different aspects. LucasArts created a new engine for the game to be able to do what they wanted. The PlayStation 2 and Nintendo GameCube versions of the game have different custom in-house graphic engines, each designed specifically to take advantage of the two platforms unique strengths and work around their unique limitations, but the core game engine is identical. Set in the Star Wars Legends Expanded Universe, the story follows former Mandalorian warrior Jango Fett during his prime as a bounty hunter and provides the backstory to the character's role in the Attack of the Clones explaining several elements from the film, such as how he acquired his iconic ship, met his partner in crime Zan Wessel, and was chosen as a genetic template for the Grand Army of the Republic. And what of your plan for the clone army? Our cloners require a host. You must find an ideal specimen, perhaps among the galaxy's most dangerous mercenaries. I shall accomplish both of these tasks with a single stroke, Master. Yes, yes. I look forward to completing your training, my friend. In the game's overarching narrative, Fett is hired by the Sith Lord Darth Tyrannus to eliminate the Dark Jedi Komari Vossa and becomes entangled in an extensive Death Stick trafficking conspiracy while clashing with several criminal syndicates and an old rival. Django, voiced by Tamara Morrison, has access to a wide array of weapons, including his trademark blaster pistols, a flamethrower and jetpack mounted missiles. Players can use Django's jetpack to fly and reach areas that are otherwise inaccessible, but it quickly runs out of fuel, which recharges automatically when the jetpack is not used. Additionally, Django can use a scanner built into his helmet to identify individuals and see if they have a bounty on their head. Players can then capture the individuals in question, either dead or alive. Django automatically targets enemies and holding a certain button allows him to move around an enemy while keeping them targeted. If the player is using Django's blaster pistols, up to two enemies can be targeted at the same time. Completing levels and capturing bounty targets rewards the player with credits which can be used to unlock concept art. Each level has a secret feather which unlocks cards from the Star Wars trading card game by Wizards of the Coast. If all feathers are found, bonus footage is unlocked. After every level, pages of the comic Open Seasons are unlocked for viewing and after completing chapters, the player can see some blooper reels. 
<laughs> this is going to hurt you a lot more than me. Why, does, why in every game do we have that line? Come on. Come on! Bounty Hunter received mixed to positive reviews from critics who praised its graphics, length, sound, level design and shooting mechanics. Criticism was aimed at the game's repetitive nature, camera control and technical issues, while the bounty hunting system was met with mixed reactions. I'll accept your offer, Tyrannus, on one condition. And that is? I want the first clone for myself, unmodified. Might I inquire as to why? You might. Very well. Consider it done. We have a deal then, Django Fett. Deal. 